But your mom being a teacher, was it just only so much she could do? Yeah, there was so there was only so much she could do. Um, she was my my mother was strict with me. Um, she was strict with me, but when, you know, once you hit fourteen, you're kind of like, you know, puberty hits you. You just it's just different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're not you know you I'm taller than my mother. It's, it's just different. You know, um, my father had just retired and started a new job. He was living on the other side of the city. Um, I, I I'll never forget my mother. Uh, one day I came home and she was crying and she was like, why are you doing this to me? And that got to me. That broke mm-hmm. my heart. Yeah. Um, and I said from there, I was going to change. And then I just, I just couldn't, you know, it's like, it's easy to say it when you walk outside your door and you get on that bus and it's, you know, it's just, it's a circus outside. It just is what it is. Um, so what my mother did was one day she took me, um, she took me clothing shopping in the middle of the year, which was weird because, you know, you usually take them shopping in September, right? Yeah. So she takes me clothing shopping. Now, in, in New York, the kids that are from the hood hood, like the projects, they don't do good in school, but they dress a lot, <laughs> right? They're just in that in that social structure, right? So my mother took me shopping. So I felt like I won. I felt like, okay, she gets it. She's going to leave me alone. Let me do my thing. You know what I'm saying? She's going to make sure I'm fly. <laughs> So I didn't understand it, but I was, you know, I was happy. So the next morning, she comes in my room and she's like, you know, you okay? You like your clothes? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, thanks. She's like, okay, good. Because um, I just want to make sure you're good because you got to go. And I was like, what do you mean I got to go? She's like, you got to go. You got to get out of my house. Wow. So I'm 14. Um, I just had a lot going on in the street. I mean, a lot going on. When I see movies of... Dudes that just got the pressure from all sides. That was the typical kid that went to Jackson or or from the hood in New York. So I had all this stuff. So I called up a lot of my friends like, yo, can I come stay with you? Damn, bro. I mean, I'm in mad trouble myself. So I really had nowhere to go. My grandparents um, were living in St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Wow. They decided to move back to the States after I think like 15 or 17 years. Um, so I only knew I only knew my grandparents from from when I went to the islands for like the summers and stuff, my mm-hmm. sisters. And um, they had just moved to Atlanta because we had an older cousin that moved there. Um, that Atlanta wasn't f- familiar to anybody in my family until my older cousin Tony moved there. So my um my grandmother um and, and grandfather moved there. That's as far as I knew, that's where they lived their whole life. Cause since <laughs> I was born, you know, since I was two months old, my mother was carrying me you know, to the islands to go see them. So um, they moved to Atlanta and I just had so much heat on me from every direction that I just sat down and was like, yo, you you got to go down to your grandparents. So I just told my mother and father, I was like, I, I'll do it, I'll leave. And I went down to Atlanta. And then, um, you know, it, it was heartbreaking because at the time, like, um, like I remember me and LL Cool J used to go on the bus every day. He rapping, I beatboxing. We were looking for Dougie Fresh, looking for um Buffy from from the Fat Boys, looking for Biz Markey. Like that was the battle era. You know what I'm saying? So oh. it was like this whole world is opening up of hip hop, and it was like in the middle of it, they just you know I just had to take myself out of it. So that was um, that was heartbreaking because moving to Atlanta was a, a hell of a, of a culture shock. Wow! I mean, so I mean, so you're about fourteen. So you said that you and LL were in the same school, or you just in the same neighborhood? Yeah, we, we went to the we went to the we went to the to the private school together, okay. um, which was called Crystal Robbins, and we both went to Andrew Jackson after that. Wow! Yeah, then- so he was he was like three he was three grades above me. But I, but I knew him from yeah. the old because the private school was kindergarten to twelfth grade. Ah, okay. So it was just, a, it was just a weird school. It was just, a, it was, it was, yeah, it was weird. It was a very weird situation over there. At, at the time, just before you left New York, was um, was Sugar Hill Gang out and Curtis Blow? Um, were, were those? Yeah, type of- Sugar Hill Gang was out way before then. Okay. Um, in elementary school, I remember them coming out and. Curtis Blow came out that year. Okay. Yeah, he came out that year because the DJ was AJ, and I used to wear this hat that said AJ Beatbox on it. 
for Andrew Jackson. So yeah, that was that was um that was the same year. Okay, so uh, who uh, not who? But so this is when hip hop was bubbling up with um. um uh, this is when hip hop was was spreading through New York, and when hip hop was actually um. It was this voice of our generation that we were loud and proud with. That we didn't give a shit what nobody said. Like we just didn't care. Um, we 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 knew we we knew that what we had was the hottest thing. It felt like the hottest thing in in the country. Yeah, you know, we had a, our own style of dress, our own language, our own um, our own um, art, and our own music. But then, how was that? Going beside uh, parallel to the the crack epidemic, how was that? Was it almost a way of escaping that, or was it a way of just communicating how it is? Or they were they were all extensions of the same thing, you know. They were all extensions of the same thing. Um, you know, at, at that age, that's when we're like opening up to the world. Mm. You know what I mean? Where we can, we go places without our parents. So at that age. That's when whatever borough you come from, we're all meeting up at 42nd Street, which was a movie in itself. That's when you hear about different places. You hear about Skate Key. Um, you hear about Empire, Brooklyn. You hear about um, Love People, Peyton Place. Um, you hear uh, America, you Club America. You hear about all of these different places, and you're getting on the trains and the buses, and you're traveling all over the city, all over the five boroughs. But every borough is dangerous because you can get killed on the train. You can get wow. killed when you get off the train. You can get robbed. Um, you know, that, that was just a big thing. Everybody was robbing everybody. Everybody was shooting everybody. It was, it was just, it was just pandemonium everywhere you went. Everywhere you went in them five boroughs, it was, it was, it was crazy. It, it, you tell a story that as if there was very there was little regard or value for life within the community. Um, mm -hmm. And I would have thought it would be the opposite, where the um, the, the the government and and all the stuff that was happening within New York was done by the, the system. So we need to stick together and support each other. But it seems as if all that chaos actually caused more division and 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 put everyone more in a survival mode instead of a united mode. Well, it was it came in stages. It was you know you you had the epidemic and everything goes crazy and then. Through hip hop, everything is that's that's the biggest influencer. You know, back then it was it was so it was it goes from that complete destruction side to the self destruction era. You mm -hmm. know, where it's now it's this black awareness, and now we're wearing. You know, you got half of the hood wearing gold chains, saying, "You know, I'm a king. This comes from slavery." And then you got the other <laughs> wearing a leather um, Africa, you know, Africa pendant. Yeah. So so it, it's. You know, you're you're watching this culture just evolve. You know, yeah. it, it started out as just a party scene, and new ideas coming and creativity coming, and you know, and we're trying to just get as much reach as possible. And then you know, then it shifts, and, and it shifts into the whole Africa movement and all of that. Um, wasn't a, wasn't a big Caribbean movement back then. You know, you went to kids that were Haitian, Jamaican, Trini, Guyanese, African, but you don't really know because. The culture was just so strong, you wanted to be a part of that. You know, yeah. there wasn't. So you saw more of the culture in the household than outside. Mm. So. Did, did um had the show come out before you moved to Atlanta, before you had to move to Atlanta? Doggy Face, the show. Yeah. Was it... yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that should have been and you know, in you know, you gotta you gotta remember there was no internet, there was no social media, there was no no quick demand, you know what I mean, and quick satisfaction. So every record that came out, if it was um Kumo D, if it was the Treacherous Three, if it was um Fearless Four, whatever it was, everybody can't kind of it was like a new sound was coming out every month. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Then the Pac Jam, like those kind of records, the, the um, Soul Sonic Force, those kind of records. So it like this thing was really just being birthed at that time. It wasn't like people say, oh, Cool Herc invented hip hop. Yeah. He invented hip hop. He created something that was pivotal in hip hop. Mm. But New Yorkers created hip hop. New Yorkers that were Latin, African, Caribbean, and American. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you love what you watched, 
there's over 100 artists that we've interviewed so please check out the videos remember to like share how not and subscribe but better still become a member of halftime chat and get exclusive videos ahead of time but thanks for watching take care